help you to become more aware of atmosphere in the sense that it was known in ancient times. I'm bringing some of the ancient technology back into these modern days because I think that we can use this technology. Um, with it, one of the theories that they have about how people first started using fragrance intentionally was um, way back when there were, to my understanding, there were um, clusters of women that lived together. And the men folk would come and they would, they would do the hunting and all of that stuff and they would come and they would trade with the women, the communities of women. And then children came about and all of that and then before you knew it, it grew into what we know now which is, you know, uh, we know who sired who and who gets the inheritance and all of that. But at one time, it wasn't like that. Now, women would go off to, uh, to, to pick berries. And when they were ovulating, they were invariably jumped upon, OK? And but what they discovered was some of these berries and these things that they were picking had these wonderful fragrances that would mask that would enable them to go from point A to point B while they were ovulating without having that problem. So that's one of the theories about the intentional use of fragrance. Now, a little bit later on, when uh, fire was discovered and used, around the fireplace, they, you know, they would throw branches and, and all kinds of things, and these wonderful fragrances came out. And not only did they about that they people started to notice that they felt good, that these fragrances that they were, you know, caused them to feel good. So before you know it, frankincense in particular and myrrh were used very intentionally. And then by the time of the pharaohs, the pharaohs had to be like deities. They had to, they had priests around them that would constantly invoke the, the deity upon them using aromatics and maintaining this elevated state, pulling everyone out of the grip of human existence into another realm of energetic.